What is alternating current? Simply put, AC is a type of electricity in which the current changes its direction of flow periodically. If current never changes direction within a circuit, it is considered a direct current, even if the level of the DC constantly changes but maintains a single direction. Such varying direct currents are referred to as pulsating DC. If the current periodically reaches zero, it is referred to as intermittent DC. Intermittent and pulsating DC can be viewed as a combination of DC and AC. There are special circuits that can be used to separate such currents into their constituent forms for separate analysis or use. Other circuits can also be used to combine AC and DC signals. AC can come in a variety of waveforms such as sinusoidal, which is the most common type, the square wave, which is vital in digital electronics for representing binary values, and triangular waveform, which is useful in timing circuits. By using Fourier analysis, you can construct any desired shape of a periodic waveform by adding a collection of sine waves together, but that's a story for another day. So, how does AC arise? Well, to produce an alternating current, you need an alternating voltage source. This source will set up an alternating electric field, which will then push charges inside a conductor in an oscillating fashion. To help you imagine this, think of an oscillating spring that alternately pushes and pulls on a particle as it compresses and extends. In this analogy, the spring is the alternating voltage source. The force it exerts on the particle is the electric force exerted on electrons in a conductor, and the particle itself is an electron within the conductor. Thus, in a simple AC circuit, all electrons are oscillating back and forth about their average position under the influence of an oscillating electromotive force from the AC power source. This means that the average displacement of the electrons within the conductor over time is zero. Current is the flow of charge, so from our analogy, we can describe the magnitude of alternating current in terms of the motion of the particle. A high speed in one direction then implies a high current in that direction, and vice versa. By looking at the motion of the particle, we can see that there are moments when its speed is zero, which occur at the maximum displacements of the particle, when it's about to change its direction. This tells us that AC also has instances when the current flowing is zero, right before the change in direction of that current. Soon after the particle changes its direction, it builds up speed, reaches a maximum speed at zero displacement, and starts to slow down until it reaches zero speed again at the other end. Likewise, AC will also build up in magnitude as time progresses, reaches a maximum value, and then gradually falls down to zero before repeating the whole process again in the opposite direction. We will come back to this graph later in the video. Here is the symbol for an alternating sinusoidal AC power source. Examples of such power sources include power generators and inverters, which convert DC from a battery into AC. We will talk about inverters in a separate video. In your homes, it is AC that is flowing and powering everything that you use. By filming a light bulb with a high-speed camera, you can see that the bulb alternately switches on and off as the current becomes zero in between changes in direction. The primary reason for using AC is that it is easier to manipulate and cheaper to transmit from the power station to consumers. This convenience manifests itself in the ease with which AC voltages can be stepped up or down by using transformers, which cannot be done with DC. By stepping up AC voltages to high values before transmitting the power, you are able to transmit it at a very low current, meaning that little power is lost due to the internal resistances of the power lines. Upon reaching the consumers, this high voltage AC can then be stepped down to values suitable for home appliances using a step-down transformer. Looking back at that graph for alternating current, we can see that it has a maximum value and a period, which is the time it takes for the current to complete one cycle or oscillation. From the period, the frequency of AC can be deduced. 
frequency is defined as the number of cycles that the alternating current completes per unit time. This can be around 50 to 60 Hz for household power, but can be much higher in some special applications. We can mathematically describe alternating current as a sine function, where this is the maximum current, and omega is the angular frequency of the AC. Omega is a function of the frequency of the AC. By using Ohm's law, we can also graph the alternating voltage against time. For simple AC circuits, current and voltage are always in phase, meaning they reach their maximum and zero values at the same time, all the time. When a resistor is connected to an AC supply, then power dissipated by the resistor is given by this equation. This tells us that the power also varies with time, but is always positive due to this squaring factor. There are points when the power dissipated is zero, corresponding to points in time when current and voltage values are zeros. So, a meaningful description of this power is through an average value. This mean power can be described as the DC equivalent power to the AC power in question. By this convention, alternating voltages and currents can also be described in terms of equivalent DC values that we can use in calculations. These are called root mean square values and are defined as DC equivalent values that would produce the same power across a given resistor as the AC in question. RMS values are more commonly used in labeling AC sources and devices. The mean power can then be expressed in terms of these RMS values as well. That's it for the basics of AC. Thank you for watching.